Welcome everybody. My name is Peter Kurta. I'm heading the automation R&D in the Nokia Core Networks Core R&D. Uh, here with me today we have Peter Fazekas from Bell Labs. Uh, he's a research scientist uh, working with 6G and Zoltan Bauko from the Core R&D as well working on system topics uh, such as energy efficiency improvements. Today we are going to talk about energy efficiency, what Nokia is doing and what particularly Nokia Core is doing to improve the energy efficiency, the energy consumption of core networks, how to optimize that uh, for the reason of uh, become more green and of course to use less, ele less electricity and with that optimize the operational costs. First, uh, guys, let's talk about in general, before we give deep dive, let's talk about in general why is it what what the mobile operators what the mobile networks are doing to improve energy use of the wider community so i'm what i have in the mind is how it is reducing the amount of uh, people needed to transport or the the amount of, uh, uh, of in the industry uh, how it is improving the automation level things like that Peter. In general, I think uh, it is a bit underrated uh, and it's not understood quite well how important the networks themselves are. For instance, uh, in what you mentioned in this example of reducing the transportation that is needed, flights, uh, car rides and so on and so forth. But in general, if uh, this is the, the kind of uh, blood circulation of, of the information which makes it possible. So the um, like smart cities or transportation optimization would enlarge, not just at the personal level, but enlarge, uh, contribute a lot to this energy efficiency. And especially in, in this kind of uh, situations, what we had, uh, the lockdowns during the, the COVID, no one realized that actually it's not the, the Zoom, not the applications that make it possible to keep uh, 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 people communicating, but the network itself. So it's quite underrated in terms of recognizing how important it is uh, from sustainability perspective. Good, let's go on. Uh, let's talk about the mobile network itself. Uh, uh, what is consuming electricity and, and how it is uh, impacting uh, uh, the, the buying decisions, uh, how it is uh, considered nowadays, uh, why is it important to, to, to not only to save ener energy, but, but to, to, with that, uh, improve sustainability of the, of the whole, whole network. Uh, how do you see the challenges, Peter, uh, uh, in the industry uh, around this topic? Yes, in uh, 6G vision and work, we have quite, uh, quite uh, challenging uh, goals that we set, uh, which means that we would like to kind of uh, carry 10 to 20 times more traffic compared to 5G. It was already 10 times more in the 5G. Yeah, the 5G was already 10 times more than the 4G. Uh, another 10 times improvement is uh, going to happen, but we would like to serve this with half of the energy use. So it's not like, it would be logical to use 10 times energy for 10 times traffic, but it's not like that. The goal is to, uh, to half the, the energy consumption. This is quite a challenge and very interesting topic. Right, right. Is it mostly on radio or, or is it also on core where we need to save? We have to focus on everything, every part of the network. O of course, as we know, the majority of the energy is consumed in the radio part uh, because of the equipment, the number, large number of equipment that is there and their individual consumption is quite high, actually. There is a, a lot of room to, for improvement. That has been already in the research area since the beginning of the 10th, 2010s. Now it is becoming reality at the standardization and the productization level. Right, right. So it's also a 3GPP topic. I think it was already in 5G yes, it, a little bit, right? <clears throat> so energy of efficiency has always been sort of a topic of the uh, standardization, but the focus was on, uh, at large part on the device side. Mm -hmm. So you needed the energy efficiency because you wanted to, your terminal to operate for longer time with the same battery. Therefore, this kind of discontinuous transmission, discontinuous reception, scheduling and a number of solutions and, and improvements on the, on, the, on the particular chipsets and hardware themselves were focused in the production and also in the standardization. 
but to a lesser extent on the, on the network side. Uh, now it is becoming also important in, in the standardization that we should enable at least from the interfaces and, and the standards defined procedures to, to save energy everywhere in the network. Right, right, right. I just remember I was reading an article that uh, there are three major costs uh, that are at the operator side. First, the labor cost. The second is the site acquisition cost. Mm -hmm. And the third one was about the electricity use. And especially nowadays that the electricity, the prices of electricity increased, depends on where you are, but twofold or even fivefold in some areas. It's, it's a major, major, major cost factor which is, which is increasing. So no wonder that uh, everybody is now looking into, into this area. I also remember that uh, when we deployed a, a large uh, uh, network, uh, it was in India, uh, uh, it took, uh, well, one, two years uh, to deploy because India is a huge country with thousands of sites and multiple uh, central locations for the core network. And uh, once deployed and tested, the sites were switched off uh, for the time the rest of the network is building up. Simply, they, they did not want it to run the network uselessly until there is, there is, uh, there is, there is no use. Uh, Zoltan, uh, on the core side, on the system side, uh, you, are, you are working on this area. What would be the first thing that, uh, that you would highlight how to optimize the network? Yes, <clears throat> I think the first and, and uh, maybe the, the cheapest uh, way to uh, reuse the cost is the, is the proper uh, dimensioning and mm -hmm. design. So if we, uh, <clears throat> if we uh, know the, uh, the real uh, needs, uh, the real uh, uh, expected capacity of the network, uh, we should uh, dimensioning the system to to serve this, uh, this amount of request or this amount of traffic. And uh, we also need to harmonize the different uh, components with each other. For example, <coughs> if uh, we can use um, uh, common network elements that can uh, serve more than one component, we don't need to um, deploy separate uh, instances for each. And, uh, and another um, uh, aspect, if we have uh, common um, flavors or, or common uh, harmonized uh, uh, definition of, of resources, we can share the, the physical hardwares and we can, we can uh, deploy more uh, elements on, on the same set of hardwares and, and we, can, we can save uh, 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 the, uh, the capacity. So that is, that is maybe the more, more most important uh, part at the beginning and, uh, and then later uh, uh, we have uh, uh, very, um, very big chance to, to decrease the, the power consumption if we operate the system with a, with a special care and, and if we use all of the possibilities we have. So practically you are saying that we should by design uh, at the design of the networks and uh, in the software development time by design of the network functions we can already achieve a lot if we are having this uh, sustainability in the mind, uh, footprint optimization in the mind and of course also the new technologies like uh, the containerization, the microservices, reusing some of those, sharing some of those microservices is uh, a big help in this uh, footprint optimization. Yes, you are right. So, so we, we must uh, left the, the old-fashioned uh, uh, mindset uh, uh, to, to have a sp special hardware or special set of resources that, that the uh, uh, specific uh, CNF or specific component uh, use. So it is, it is obsolete, this kind of method. So we need to... Uh, uh, somehow we, we uh, need to uh, contribute, uh, uh, I mean all of the R&Ds need, need to contribute uh, to each other to have uh, this, uh, this common point of your common set of, of resources. Understood, understood. Good, uh, GSMA was uh, making uh, uh, as analysis uh, about the mobile networks and uh, trying to map 
uh, where the energy is being used uh, in the normal network operations. Uh, Peter, would you mind introducing this research to us? Yes, so as we discussed earlier, uh, most of the energy is consumed at the radio access network side, roughly three quarters, so 75% of it is, is in the radio access network, which is also divided into multiple paths, which uh, uh, we could discuss in another discussion for hours, but it's not that important for us uh, at the moment. Uh, they treated, so it was, it, 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 this uh, uh, survey was uh, from 2021, where the cloudification was not that widespread, although it was happening already at that time, but at that time they considered core networks as mainly uh, legacy 4G, early 5G uh, build-outs, uh, even 3G uh, and the transport, and they had a separate category on data center, which they run, where they run the, uh, the operation systems and the business support systems and so on and so forth. So the core uh, and the data center part together made up around 20, so 13% uh, for the core and 7% for the data center. So that, that's the, the pie chart that we have to, to deal with. So when you say core, that, that means probably the uh, core network mm -hmm. functions and data center is the, the transport, uh, the cooling. Uh, data center was, was considered where, so the, the, the core was, was the kind of more traditional or legacy core, SGSN, uh, PDN gateway and so on and so forth for 3G. 4G, le to lesser extent uh, 5G, uh, and where they explicitly mentioned data center, they were referring to the other software services, and it was quite not clear whether a Cloudify 5G core, for instance, is, is taken as part of data center or as core. But all in all, I think uh, what is happening is that we are moving towards the data center, mm. as, as, as we know. So that, that kind of roughly 15 to 20 percent that we should look at now, uh, which is a huge on its own actually, although it's just 20% or 15, but it's, it's a huge amount in terms of uh, consumed electricity. It is, it is. And uh, knowing that uh, core network is decentralizing, right? We are going to edge uh, deployment. So more, a little bit smaller data center and, uh, and also the cloud run is separating the centralized and the distributed unit, meaning that the centralized unit is coming and getting co-located uh, with probably in the very same edge data centers. Uh, I, I, would, I would assume that uh, there is a force which is, we should increase this uh, uh, ratio. On the other hand, of course, uh, we have the engineering who is then trying to shrink uh, and, 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 and optimize this. Yes, indeed. So the, the, it's not only the virtual, uh, the centralized unit, but even the distributed unit that we are in the future going to run in cloud environments. So even the radio access network part, besides the radio and the, and the RF signal processing, everything is going to happen uh, in, in the cloud. Uh, and as we know, the, the core networks themselves. And there are other movements in the 6G, like unifying, uh, for instance, user plane function with the, with the centralized unit, mm -hmm. which then become a single network function. Then it will have a different footprint, different consumption. But all in all, I think everything is moving into the cloud and will be run in data centers. The number of sites, you are very right. So uh, it's always about centralization and, and, and distribution. We have to find the right balance uh, and energy consumption should be one of the most important factors where uh, when we design on this level of centralization. Um, and I think uh, uh, all that comes with it, so the, the network topology itself and the, the routing, uh, how we, we deploy the uh, the transport infrastructure itself is going to have an influence on, on the total energy consumption. But actually, luckily, uh, uh, the, for a number of reasons, we would like to improve the network uh, and the topology. What, what Zoli just mentioned, this kind of optimization of the throughprint is also valid and very much reasonable for a number of other purposes, not just for energy efficiency. <music> Very interesting. Let's let's go a little bit deeper and 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 let's see how we are improving uh, uh, the efficiency consumptions of the network. Let's start with the lowest layer, with the hardware. Uh, start uh, start with that. Uh, of course, uh, one of the the biggest. Uh, if you are if you are looking at the data center, one of the biggest use of the of uh, uh, energy 
uh, are the CPUs in the various systems. If I look at the radio, then of course there's a chip in the radio. If I look at the switches and routers, there is a, a central processing unit of some sort uh, there. And if I look at the core network, then of course uh, we have the CPUs. Uh, Nokia as a whole, we are having some of their own, some of our own chips, right? So in the radio we have the Reef Shark, in the routers we have the FP5. But from core network point of view, of course, the most important is the, the CPU. We are running on x86 uh, CPUs right now. And uh, of course we are using the newer and newer generation of, uh, of servers and, and CPU units. Uh, nevertheless, uh, since in the recent years, energy consumption is in the forefront of innovation also of the, of the harder vendors of those x86 CPUs. We are working together with them in joint projects to, to test and, and, and work together the further optimization uh, of those, uh, those, those units. Zoltan, your team is working on this area. You are working together with one of the biggest x86 uh, uh, chip manufacturer. Can you tell us a little bit about this project? Yes, uh, we have a joint uh, project with Intel and, uh, and we are working uh, on a, a POC with the newest uh, uh, CPU generation, this uh, so-called Safid Rapid, uh, which will uh, replace the uh, Ice Lake, which is the current uh, uh, available uh, CPU. We can uh, uh, proceed the same level of, of traffic than mm -hmm. before with lower uh, CPU load mm -hmm. just because of the of the new processors mm -hmm. without any any additional uh, configuration or additional tools. It's user plane uh, that you are doing uh, this test, right? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, first uh, we was uh, working on the user plane mm -hmm. because uh, Intel has some some additional um, uh, tools or additional functions, not just the new uh, CPUs, but uh, 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 they have some uh, uh, user plane uh, uh, optimization tool and uh, and we already already tested this uh, uh, this function so called IPM and uh, uh, this uh, tool can um, uh, work together with the UPF uh, uh, which is the uh, main function in uh, in this uh, uh, Nokia core handle by, uh, this uh, use traffic. data traffic and the uh, UPF uh, uh, can um, uh, distribute or share the the actual uh, CPU usage information via the DPDK uh, telemetry and the uh, IPM can uh, read this uh, 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 information and based on 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 the actual CPU usage uh, IPM uh, can uh, change the uh, CPU frequency mm -hmm. within a, a uh, well-defined uh, uh, range, and because of this uh, capability, uh, we can we can reduce the the power consumption of the server. So if we uh, just uh, uh, manage uh, thirty CPU cores from the uh, 128, uh, we can uh, reach 20-30% uh, um, less power consumption. And I would, I would assume this is uh, also these new CPUs typically having new more cores than the previous generation, so altogether we also need less servers, which is uh, equally important, right? Okay. And. Uh, so it is, it is not uh, as easy as it seems to be because uh, uh, we, we continuously uh, need to, to monitor the, uh, the performance of the system. Mm -hmm. and, and we can uh, react if uh, the traffic is, is uh, getting higher and higher and, and uh, we need to, to uh, uh, change the, the frequency need to, to increase the frequency based on this, this measurement. So, so that is the, the uh, hardest part of this work. Mm -hmm. The functionality is there, so it is, it is working well, but, but uh, we would like to uh, make sure if it is uh, uh, um, good enough or, or, or uh, powerful enough to handle every the uh, single uh, traffic scenarios or, or traffic situations. Yeah, obviously it's not acceptable to digrade. Uh, to yes, degrade, of uh, course, so that is the, the most important. Right, 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 understood. 
Uh, how about the Kubernetes layer? Uh, do you have anything on the Kubernetes layer which is helping you to optimize? Yes, yes. Uh, this, uh, this IPM is basically for the uh, user plane, but uh, Intel also uh, has some uh, solution for the control plane as well. And then uh, we are uh, just uh, configuring the Kubernetes Power Manager, which is uh, uh, the tool for, for the control plane related uh, uh, object or components. Understood, understood. So it's helping the, the Kubernetes and the scheduler to, in yeah. a more optimal way, uh, do the scheduling of the, of the CNFs practically. Yes, yeah. and ba basically it is about f uh, of, the, of the CPU frequency mm -hmm. as well. So, uh, so, <laughs> uh, so th this is a fact. So more frequency equals more power consumption. If we can manage this situation and if we can reduce the frequency if possible or if uh, not really necessary to, to run on, on the highest level, we can save the energy. Right, right. I was asking you guys uh, about the servers actually because uh, yes, of course, we can save tens of percentages uh, uh, in the consumption of the CPU or even the server maybe uh, with these ticks and trips. But uh, the best if we can actually switch off an entire server, right? So, so simply switch off uh, those servers that we are not using. And automation comes here. Uh, automation is having a major role here because it is the automation and the monitoring which uh, in time has to initiate this scaling in and when we need to scale out the scaling out. Uh, process. So, what are the challenges here, uh, Peter? There are a number of challenges actually in the telecom industry. We will have uh, to keep uh, the service level, of course. Uh, we have uh, typically availability requirements, so uh, a number of nines should be yeah. always provided. These are critical systems for sure. Critical systems, it is simply not allowed to any enable any degradation of the service quality because of even because of perf uh, energy performance reasons. So that's already a, a huge challenge. It's, it's not just like in any other IT systems where you have thousands of equivalent servers and if some is failing, the rest can take it over because they are controlling typically how, how the telco networks built uh, uh, user, end user, uh, consumer connections and for instance you don't want to drop those. So for instance if you want to, what you mentioned, scale in some so network functions and, and turn off the servers that are emptied now, you just for instance have to wait or, or forcefully somehow redirect the traffic to somewhere else. So it's not just, it's just not happen, doesn't happen that easily. That is uh, one of the ma major challenges and also the uh, the functions that we are running are, are more complex in terms of their internal uh, connectivity requirements, the they, uh, accessibility to, to disk, for instance, they are doing logging and so on and so forth. A number of things should be orchestrated uh, very efficiently uh, in a way and to achieve uh, this kind of scaling up and down to enable the server to be switched off and it should happen very quickly so it doesn't uh, sufficient if we can do it in, in half a day or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I remember when we did this in the VNF times uh, 10 years ago, uh, it, 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 you're right, it was like a half a day or at least the four or five hours. I remember our uh, timer was four hours uh, for the course to run out uh, because the VNFs were still stateful. Yeah. Uh, nowadays, uh, with the cloud native architecture of the core network functions, CNFs are not stateful anymore, they are stateless. Yep. And for that reason, uh, all this uh, scale in and scale out, particularly scale in, which is uh, always the more difficult one, yep. can actually happen uh, in, uh, in a flexible way. Yeah. And so yeah. One, please, one more please. that, uh, uh, so you, uh, you were right in saying that in general, the most energy efficient thing what we can do is to not use any energy. So therefore <laughs> I turn off the I switch on, uh, turn off the light when I'm out of the room, and, and this is the, the this is the philosophy. Uh, and this is not just about the CPU power, but all the surrounding uh, um, uh, uh, solution which is around the data center, and we can exploit those. So there is a whole lot of industry working on, for instance, improving the energy efficiency of cooling systems. Mm -hmm. I mean, Nokia doesn't have to work on it; someone else will do it for us, and and we will be naturally having a, a more efficient data center. 
The same with the, the power supply units themselves, they have an efficiency. Someone else will, will provide us a more efficient uh, power supply unit and then it's better for us. If you can turn off the most of the things, all those inefficiencies will also be uh, eliminated. Lighting you can uh, talk about. So even if, if you physically turn off the light because there's no need for being there. And I can give you an example of what, from the radio network where I was discussing with an operator about radio base station network uh, energy consumption and they told that they changed the light bulbs from the, the high power 800 watt light bulbs that are lighting uh, on the top of the tower. They changed it to lead based and, and they saved a huge amount of energy <laughs> just because of they changed the, the lights. So all this surrounding technology will help us uh, and we have to exploit everything uh, what is possible. Right, right, right. I, I cannot emphasize enough uh, that at Nokia we fully understand uh, how critical these systems are and how much uh, all these saving initiatives must not touch uh, the robustness uh, of, the, of the networks itself. And we are still doing the very same robustness performance test, uh, stability test and so on, right? So then in the system verification laboratory, it is exactly the same robustness and, uh, and uh, performance test that you are executing with, these, uh, uh, with the scaling and with, uh, with all these uh, operators and, and, and new Intel features on the CPUs and so on. All right, uh, uh, I think nowadays, uh, uh, just to, to go a little bit on, uh, uh, we didn't talk about one of the biggest technology advancement of the, of the recent times, and that is uh, AI technology. Using AI in, uh, in, uh, in, this, in this whole topic, uh, and, uh, and I have to say that uh, in, the, in the core R&D, particularly in the, uh, in the mobility, uh, CNF, uh, the Cloud Mobility Manager, which is uh, the, providing the AMF functionality and the MME functionality in the 4G network. Actually, we uh, even introduced the feature uh, which is using AI to learn the traffic pattern over a period of time uh, of, uh, of this uh, CNF and proactively do scaling. Uh, of this uh, network function according to the time of the day or time of the year. So it's, 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 it's learning the, the, the pattern and, and, and proactively switching on and switching off uh, pods, uh, containers uh, of the MME function and with that uh, continuously adjusting uh, the size uh, of, the, of the network function and the footprint of course uh, with, uh, with, with that. Uh, we have Gordon Millikens, uh, who is the portfolio manager for the CMG product. Uh, we have a short video from him, uh, who would talk about this feature of the uh, CMG product and, uh, and tell us how AI is applied in practice. Hi, I'm Gordon Milliken, head of Packet Core uh, product management uh, here at Nokia. I've been talking to our customers and they tell me one of their biggest concerns is about increasing energy prices. They also tell me they are motivated to improve their ESG. They're asking me how we can help them reduce power consumption and get their costs under control. My response is that at Nokia, we've been working on three aspects of power management to meet their needs. First, improving performance with higher power CPUs. We've seen roughly 30% improvement generation on generation with the same application software and product footprint. Moving to newer generations of CPUs increases product capacity without increasing the server footprint and brings down the cost per core. Second, reducing energy consumption by reducing CPU frequency to only the power the application needs. We significantly reduce operating cost by running at lower CPU frequency. New chipset generations have advanced power management that adjusts CPU frequency per core and even lets CPUs enter into sleep states when not in use, which results in only consuming the exact energy that these applications need. And finally, 
we can further reduce energy consumption by tailoring CPU power to exactly match the processing demand from our applications. Telcom traffic loads vary over the course of the day, and our applications can use analytics and even artificial intelligence to reduce power draw from CPUs or even scale in and scale out pods to exactly match the demand at any time of day. At Nokia, we are also concerned about sustainability, so we're building software solutions that take the most out of the hardware and artificial intelligence to keep energy consumption under control. Okay. Maybe one more note to AI. Please, please, Peter, <laughs> please comment. AI. So uh, there's a lot of buzz around AI, but it will itself increase the energy consumption. So especially for training the models, and then to a lesser extent uh, in the in, uh, inference uh, stage of the AI processing, we will increase because it's a lot of computation. So there is also a balance between what we can gain in terms of energy efficiency and that we will, how uh, more we will consume. And this has to be also considered. But I'm pretty sure that it is being considered. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, the good thing is that we have a lot of data from the network operation. Actually, particularly the operators are having a lot of data from that operation, but also ourselves from the managed operation and so on. So actually, uh, and from our verification, we are many times using that data to train uh, the models and, uh, and apply that uh, learning uh, to, to, to optimize the operations, right? And, and there is a chance. Uh, we always um, uh, uh, find some, some uh, application or, or, uh, or uh, functions that we can run on the servers that are not utilized. 100% uh, in case of, of low traffic period. For example, we can use the servers that we cannot uh, switch off because of some reason for this uh, mm -hmm. train of the AI algorithm and so on. So, so it is a very important thing because if we can somehow uh, uh, turn on the servers or, or increase the capacity before the needs appears, mm -hmm. uh, is, is best, uh, it, it is a, a good chance to, to save our system, uh, service level or something like that. So I think, for example, we can use the servers night time to, to do the training to feed. part. Yeah. Yes. The training part. Yeah. yeah, very well, very well. Yeah. All this leads to this kind of what you already mentioned at the beginning, that we have to harmonize uh, and, and this kind of scaling and, and the footprint optimization should be done in a holistic manner. So whenever, I, for instance, I have a, some reserved of free capacity, but I can't turn off that server, then I could run something else. And, and it, that, that is the promise of the cloud, which makes it uh, possible to, to really dynamically optimize what I run and where. And that could, uh, in that sense, uh, contribute a lot to uh, to the energy efficiency as well. Each operation takes time. So for example, powering on a server, a physical server, takes several minutes. Yeah. So if, if I need some, some um, uh, further uh, resources, I, if I have, have uh, uh, several minutes to wait to boot up the server and, and, uh, and serve the request, it is uh, good. But, but uh, sometimes I don't have, I mean the, the system don't have several minutes. Yeah. To, to serve uh, the, the actual request. Yeah, which is again, highlights the importance that we have to be always ready for unforeseen events, right? Uh, uh, traffic storms, uh, yes. things like that. Uh, so we, we cannot, you know, optimize uh, everything on the, on the energy use, but, uh, but we have to maintain some flexibility in the system so we can, we can serve unforeseen events. Yes, but if we have some, some um, uh, buffer for this type of, of events. We have chance to save the resources if we use common buffers for several different type of, uh, of uh, services or type of uh, network elements. So we don't need to, to specify and, and, and feed dedicated uh, buffer for each, but we can use some, some pool where uh, we have uh, moderated amount of resources. Right. Peter, Zoltan, thank
thank you very much uh, for this discussion. If I may try to summarize just in a few sentences. Uh, so we talked about the energy consumptions of mobile networks, how, we are, how that energy consumption is distributed. Then we focused on the core side, what we are doing in the core using the latest and greatest technology on the uh, hardware, on the infrastructure, the Kubernetes infrastructure, and, and we talked about how uh, cloud native network functions uh, of Nokia are capitalizing on, uh, on, uh, on those development and, and, and using those flexibilities also to save energy, save footprint, save energy. We talked about the use of AI in this exercise, and uh, finally, we talked about uh, how still with all these optimizations, we preserve the robustness and the high availability of the system. Gentlemen, thank you very much for the discussion. It was enjoyable. Thank you for thank inviting you. Thank us. You.